Good day, grade elements. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics, I mean in physical science. In this lesson, we're going to be going through your gas laws. Now, we started this lesson on Tuesday where we looked at basically doing different types. We spoke about the difference between ideal gases and real gases. And then we started by looking at Boyle's law. So I thought what I would do is I would start here again because obviously it's a bit difficult to remember exactly what you were learning on Tuesday. So let's talk about Boyle's law. Boyle's law states, the definition is that the pressure of a fixed quantity of gas is inversely proportional to the volume it occupies so long as the temperature remains constant. So what we're saying is that basically, hang on, let me just get to the animation I want to show you. I want to show you an animation, so just wait. Um, there it is there. Okay, so this animation actually comes from a website called, if you Google PHET, it's from the University of Colorado. Um, Basically, it's a whole bunch of physics and chemistry and all sorts of um, animations and simulations, and they're great. So if you're ever struggling to understand something, feel free to go look. They usually have something there. Okay, so what we have here is a container. Okay, you can see that I can let stuff out, okay, out of the container. I can push the container walls in, which means I can change the volume. I can heat stuff up or I can cool stuff down. So I can either heat it up or I can cool it down. Okay. Um, at the moment, what we are saying is that the temperature remains constant and we're going to look at the volume and pressure. Here is a pressure gauge. Okay. And what are we saying? We're saying that if we had to change the volume once we have a certain amount of pressure, we should have a difference. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the advanced. No, we're not going to do that. Let's see if we've got a... No. Okay, fine. I was hoping for a graph. Okay, so what we are doing is we are going to pump some gas in. Okay, and we're going to pump just enough gas to get some pressure going. And you can see that the amount of gas in, there are 134 parts of some heavy species. Don't worry about that too much. So the constant parameter is the temperature. The temperature is not allowed to change. Okay, I'm just going to close that properly so nothing can escape. Okay, so the constant parameter is the temperature. And you can see the pressure is about, let me make this bigger is about 0.64, 9.65. Now remember pressure is basically a measure of how much the particles are bumping into each other or they are bumping into the size of the container. Now I'm going to decrease the volume. Yes, little dude's going to push it in. Look what happens. Okay, the temperature has to remain the same. So in order for the temperature to remain the same, it's got to go back down to 300 Kelvin because that's what we set it at. Look what's happened to the pressure. The pressure's gone up to 0.76. It was sitting at 0.6 something. Now it's at 0.7. Let's push, push it in a little bit more. Okay, see, temporarily the temperature does go up. Okay, but now it's resettling down because we've said it has to remain constant at 300 Kelvin, 301, 300. And look what's happened to the pressure now. Now the pressure is at 0 0.95 atmospheres. So we can see that as the volume decreases, the pressure increases, assuming that the temperature remains the same. So again, I'm going to push this really far in. Okay, and have a look what happens to that pressure, okay? You can see again that as it resettles that to normal temperature of it's going down to 300 Kelvin, it's going to get there, yeah. The pressure is now between 1.97 and 2 point something atmospheres. So you can see that the pressure has definitely, definitely um, increased as the volume has decreased. Similarly, if I spread this out, check what happens to the pressure. Okay, the pressure drops dramatically. Okay, now it's down to 0 0.76. Let's see if I can push this out a little bit further. The bigger the volume, the lower the pressure. So, what we're saying is that the pressure is directly proportional to 1 over volume. So, as I don't know why I've got two of the same graph here. What this should have had was pressure and 
going to be one over volume and it would have been a straight gra line graph that as the pressure gets smaller the volume gets bigger so that would have been your straight line graph pressure is directly proportional to one over volume or a better way to say it is that for a fixed quantity of gas okay the pressure is inversely proportional to the volume as long as the temperature remains the same okay so that is Boyle's law and what we can say is therefore that P1V1 okay so what we're saying is that P1 is equal to um, K over V1 some constant for a specific gas but what they noticed was that P2 is equal to K over V2 for the same specific gas. In other words, this K remains the same. Therefore, we can say P1, V1 is equal to K, and P2, V2 is equal to K. Therefore, therefore, we've got P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2, and that's where this equation comes from. Okay, so that's Boyle's law. Now let's use an example to make sure you guys understand Boyle's law. So it's P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. Now, if you're looking on your formula sheet right now as we're busy working, you won't find Boyle's Law on it, okay? And the reason for that is because it's actually part of a bigger law, which I will teach you about, okay? But at the moment, just trust me that you will... In fact, let me tell you, if you look on your, on your formula sheet, you'll see P1, V1 over T1, is equal to P2, V2 over T2, okay? And we will get to that formula and I'll explain it to you, okay? But at the moment, we are only using the top half. And the reason we're using the top half is because the temperature remains constant, okay? So it says, a sample of nitrogen gas occupies a volume of 180 cubic centimeters at 120 kilopascals and 25 degrees Celsius. What volume would it occupy if the pressure is changed to 100 cubic centimeters and the temperature remains unchanged? Okay, now you need to understand that when you're doing these questions in the tests and the exams, they're not going to say straight off, oh, use Boyle's law. So the best thing to do is this, Right, welcome back. I don't know what happened there. Okay, so we want to know what is the volume and we're told the pressure is 100 kilopascals 
at the same temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. So that means if we're looking at this equation here, we know we don't have to worry about T1 and T2, they're the same. So therefore we can substitute in. Now, I know that some of you are thinking, well, cubic centimeters isn't the SI unit and kilopascals isn't the SI unit. It doesn't matter because this is a ratio. So what we can say is we've got P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2, and I'll show you why it doesn't matter. The pressure of the first one is 120 kilopascals multiplied by the volume of the first one, which is 180 cubic centimeters, is equal to the volume of the second one we don't know, okay, multiplied by the pressure of 100 kilopascals. So do you see that the kilopascals cancels the kilopascals and the answer we're gonna get is in cubic centimeters. So it does not matter that these are not SI units, but they have to be the same. This can't be in kilopascals and then P2B in pascals. You have to have, and it cannot be like in cubic centimeters and then working out volume in decimeters cubed. You have to have the same units on both sides. But in this case, you don't have to convert them. So if I move this out of the way so that I can actually work on the sum, now that we've written it all down. Okay, what can we do? Let's see, we've got 120 multiplied by 180 is equal to V2 multiplied by 100. Um, okay, so then, do you agree I can divide both sides by 100? So this cancels with this and this cancels with this. So therefore my V2 is just going to be 12 multiplied by 18. So, oopsie, wrong one. Let's get the calculator out, shall we? So that's just going to be 12, and switch it on, 12, multi 12 multiplied by 18 is going to be 216. So therefore, the V2 is going to be 216, um, and we're looking for volume, so it is centimeters cubed. Okay, and please, grade 11s, remember to put in your SI units. It's very important that you do. Okay, let's move on. Now let's talk about Charles's law. Charles's law relates volume and temperature of an unenclosed gas. So what Charles's law says is if we keep the pressure constant, then there's a relationship between volume and temperature. And he says that they are directly proportional. But please note that he mentions the Kelvin scale. Okay, and I'm going to explain the Kelvin scale in a minute, but let's first, um, Celsius. I don't know what was going on that night. Okay, Celsius. Let us go look at the animation. Okay, so now what am I doing? I'm keeping my pressure constant. It's pressure. One's looking at volume and temperature. Okay, so we've got the same number of um, particles. I haven't changed it, anything. But what I'm doing is you'll notice that in order for this to keep the same pressure, this volume has to change all the time, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna increase the volume. Look what happens to my, oh, it doesn't really like, oh, you know what I have to do, I have to reset. So this time we're gonna keep our pressure constant. Okay, the poor thing was trying to keep the temperature and the pressure constant. Okay, and now we're gonna put some gas in. So dush, dush, dush. Okay, dush, okay. Now, we want to keep the pressure constant. Okay, look how the volume has changed. Okay, now look what happens if I increase, shame it, not letting me do it. Okay, I'll tell you what, there's a better way of doing this. Let's just let out some gas. Okay, we're letting out some gas. Okay, 
There we go. We've let out some gas. Okay. So now we're going to let it settle. So there we go. Now we're going to heat it up. Okay. Let us see what happens to my volume as I increase my temperature. Okay. Do you see that as I increase my temperature, my volume increases? Okay. As I increase my temperature, my volume increases. Let's cool it down. No, wrong way. Let's cool it down. Okay, and you'll notice there's little ice blocks. As we cool it down, okay, what happens to the volume? The volume decreases. So Charles's law is basically saying that as we take an, a specific sample of enclosed gas, okay, and we heat it up or cool it down, the volume is going to be directly proportional. But yes, important bit, it is proportional to the Kelvin temperature. Okay, the Kelvin temperature. So let me explain Kelvin's temperature and um, it kind of looks like this. Okay, what happened was that there was this guy called Lord Kelvin. Um, he's a British guy. He was a lord. So in those days that lords and people had lots of money and he had a lot of free time on his hands. So we already had the Celsius scale. Okay, but now what happened was that Lord Kelvin was a scientist and or chemist and he realized that there was a bit of problem with the Celsius scale and the problem with the Celsius scale was that you were getting a lot of elements on the periodic table which had a melting point below or even a boiling point below zero. Okay, melting point below zero. In other words, it's just changing from a solid to liquid below zero degrees Celsius, okay? So what he did, which was quite clever, was he plotted a graph of all the temperatures, of the melting points of all the elements on the periodic table. And then he extrapolated, okay? So let's say he took, it looks similar to this graph, okay? But he basically said, okay, fine. If I plot all the elements on the periodic table and their melting points, okay? Then it forms kind of a table like this, okay? So, I mean, a graph like this, where this would be all the elements and this would be the degrees Celsius, the temperature at which they melt, okay? So he did that. And then what he did, he was he extrapolated it down, okay? And it actually came to minus 272 point something. So what he was doing, the reason he was doing that was saying, what happens if there's other elements that we haven't discovered for our periodic table that we haven't thought of. Okay, so he took this line, he did a base fit graph, and he took it back down, and he found that the temperature at which this should be at absolute zero, in other words, in no more, nothing can actually be changed from a solid to liquid below this, would be at minus 273 degrees Celsius. Okay, now, what you need to understand is that that is minus 273 degrees Celsius. They then call this temperature absolute zero. Okay, they call the temperature absolute zero. So in other words, minus 273, minus 273 degrees Celsius equals zero Kelvin. Zero Kelvin. Okay. But then what he did, which was quite clever, was that he made his scale for his Kelvin in, as that one Kelvin equaled one degree Celsius. In other words, minus 272 degrees Celsius is going to be one Kelvin. Minus 271 degrees Celsius is two Kelvin. Do you get the point? So as you go up on the scale, you're going up by one Kelvin as well, okay? So then they could easily relate Kelvin temperature to Celsius temperature. So we could say Kelvin is your degrees Celsius, whatever your temperature is, plus 273 degrees, okay?
you understand that? Because if it notes at minus 273, then obviously no degree Celsius is going to be 273 Kelvin. How did I get that? I had note degree Celsius plus 273 gives me 273 Kelvin. So that is the Kelvin scale. So Although I said to you guys, or I said to you guys that we were spoken, speaking about Boyle's Law, that you don't have to worry about the units. And you don't because Boyle's Law doesn't have temperature in it. But with all of these, no matter what units you're using, with Charles' Law and the gay lussac Law, which we're about to do after this, your temperature has to be in Kelvin. The, I cannot stress this enough. Temperature must be in Kelvin, okay? These, these relationships only work if the temperature is calculated to be in Kelvin, okay? So therefore, Charles's law basically says V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. Right, so now I've shown you the model. Let's do an example. So it says a sample of nitrogen monoxide gas is a temperature of 8 degrees Celsius, which we immediately know we have to add 273 to to get Kelvin. We'll worry about that now. It occupies a volume of 4,4 decimeters cubed. It says what will volume, what volume will the sample of gas have if the temperature is now increased to 25 degrees Celsius? Okay, so you do agree we have to change both the temperatures to
Welcome back. I don't know what happened there. I'm very glad that we managed to re-establish a connection. Okay, so what did we say? We said V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. Okay, so the V1 is the volume. And again, the only thing that has to happen is that your temperature has to be in Kelvin. That is it, nothing else, okay? The other things can be exactly as you find them. So in other words, if this volume happens to be in decimeters cubed, we're very happy to leave it as decimeters cubed. Okay, so we've got the V1, which is 4, 4 decimeters cubed over the Kelvin temperature of 281 is equal to V2, which we're trying to find out, over 298. Therefore, do you agree we can say 4, 4 multiplied by 298 divided by 281 is equal to V2? Okay, so now we just have to get out our calculator and we can solve for this. So let's do that. We're going to go 4.4 multiplied by 298 divided by 281 equals... 4.67. Remember, you're always running off to two decimal places in science, and there's a 666 six, six here. So we look at this six and we see it's five and bigger, so it's bigger than five. So we're going to round this up to 4.67. So therefore, V2 is going to be 4,67 decimeters cubed. 4.67 decimeters cubed. Okay, now we need to talk about the pressure temperature relationship and this is called and I haven't named it in these slides for the simple reason that a lot of textbooks don't call it this. Okay, but it's called the Gay-Lussac law, the Gay-Lussac law and it's after two French people somebody gay and somebody Lusak. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know their first names. Okay, but they basically came up with this law um, or derived this law, which said that and it makes sense. Okay, we've said, what did we have said? We've said that um, Boyle's law was a P1 V1 equals P2 V2. Then we've got Charles's law, which is V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So we know that this is going to be relating pressure to temperature. So if we keep the volume constant, we now need to relate pressure to temperature. So before we go through this, let's go through our little animation. Okay, so in this case, let's reset. This time we're keeping the volume constant keeping the volume constant okay so what we're going to do is we're going to push some stuff in okay a little bit more right now what we want to do is let's say we're going to add some heat let us have a look at what happens to the temperature okay so as we add heat what happens to the temperature okay um the temperature goes up and then what happens to the pressure? Can you see that the pressure actually increases? Do you see that? Okay. And then as we decrease the temperature, look what happens to the pressure. It also decreases. So the pressure of a gas is directly proportional to its temperature if the volume is kept constant. But that actually makes sense, okay, if you think about it. Why? Because... As the temperature increases, so does the kinetic energy of the particles, because we know that temperature is basically a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles, okay? So as the temperature increases, so does the kinetic energy of the particles. This makes the particles move more quickly. They then collide with each other and the size of the container more often. And because pressure is a measure of these collisions, in other words, how often they happen and how hard they occur, the force of which they occur, the pressure of the gas will increase with an increase in temperature. Therefore, we can say P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. So, again, let's just look at the animation. I want to show you again. Um, let's reset and we're going to keep volume and let's just add a little bit of gas. Okay, and let it just settle a little bit. Okay, now, 
let us heat it up and I want you to look at the vol I mean I want you to look at the velocity of these particles once I heat them up so as I heat them up look what happens to the velocity you can see that the increases quite substantially and as it increases so does the pressure okay whereas if I decrease the temperature what is going to happen these particles are going to move a lot slower and there's on top of that on top of that um, they're going to be not bouncing against each other or against the containers as often so therefore the pressure is going to decrease Okay, so now we can look at an example and again, 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 this one we're looking at P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. And what you need to realize again is that the only unit that is super important is the temperature unit. It has to be in Kelvin. So if they give you the temperature in degrees Celsius, you need to convert to Kelvin, right? So it says, and what we're going to do is write down P1 T1, P2, oh, that's not going to give me enough space, is it? Um, eraser. P2 and T2. So let's write this down. So it says, at a temperature of 298 Kelvin, a certain amount of oxygen gas has a pressure of 0,4 atmospheres. What temperature will the gas be if it's pressure is increased in 0.7 atmospheres and they want to know what the temperature is. So again, we don't care if you use atmospheres or pascals or kilopascals or bar if you really want to use an old fashioned version. Okay, we do not care. What we care about is the fact that the temperature is in Kelvin and that the units are the same. So you can't be using atmospheres in the first half of the question and then change to pascals or kilopascals in the second half. You have to keep the units the same the whole way through. Okay, so in this case, we've got P1, which is 0, 0,4 over T1, which is 298 is equal to P2, which is 0,7 over T2. Therefore, we're now solving for T2. So you can actually realize that you can flip both of these, okay? Because you can put your unknown at the top. So you can say 298 over 0,4 is equal to T2 over 0,7. Then you can multiply both of these sides by 0,7 and you end up with that. So let's pop this into our calculator. So we go 0 0.7 multiplied by 298 equals divided by 0 0.4 equals 521.5. So the new temperature, new temperature is going to be 521,5 Kelvin and grade 11s please note it is not degrees kelvin that is wrong it is just plain kelvin please don't get confused between that okay it's degrees celsius and plain kelvin that is all it is okay right let's move on let's do another example okay and that's time you got a cylinder of propane gas at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, which we immediately know is wrong, you need to change it to Kelvin by adding your 273, which gives you 298 Kelvin, right? So it exerts a pressure of eight atmospheres, okay? When the cylinder has been placed in sunlight, its temperature increases to 25 degrees. So T is equal to 25 degrees plus 273, which is 298. And they want to know what is the new pressure. So again, this is pretty easy. We're going to use P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. Your, this is all ones and this is all twos, right? So your pressure, the first one is eight over two. How can they both be? This is 293 sorry over 293 is equal to 290 uh, pressure 2 over 298 therefore can do you agree that your second pressure is 8 multiplied by 298 
all divided by 293. Okay, all I've done is taken that across and then I swapped sides because I like my unit to be in the front. I mean, my thing I'm solving for. So we've got 8 multiplied by 298 equals divided by 293 equals and it becomes 8.14, 8.14. So therefore P2 equals 8,14. And then you go look for the unit because it has to have the same units. And originally the unit was atmosphere. So now this is again atmospheres. Okay, not too bad. Hey, right. Now we get the general gas equation, which I've kind of mentioned. And this is the one that's on the formula sheet. P1, V1 over T1 is equal to P2, V2 over T2. And again, the only unit that counts is the temperature. It has to be in Kelvin. The rest, as long as they're the same, it doesn't matter. When we get to the ideal gas law, which is not today, when we get to it, then that thing has got specific units. And if you get those units wrong, the whole sum is wrong, okay? But for the general gas law, it's just a thing of ratios. And the only thing that makes a difference is the temperature has to be in Kelvin. If your temperature is not in Kelvin, you're going to get it wrong, okay? So the best way to work this is to get it, do examples. So let's do one more example, I think, today. We've got P1, V1, T1, and we've got P2, V2, and T2. It says a sample of gas exerts a pressure of 100 kilopascals, so that's 100, at a temperature of 15 degrees. I'm not converting yet until I need to know if I need the temperatures. It says the volume under these conditions is 10 decimeters cubed. Now it says the pressure is increased to 130 kilopascals, and these are both kilopascals, so therefore we're happy that's 130. And the temperature increases to 32 degrees. Okay, what is the new volume? Darn it, we need to change our temperature to Kelvin because we're going to be needing it. So, therefore we can say plus 273 is equal to what? 3 plus 5 is 8. 7 and 1 is 8, and that's a 2. So it's 288 Kelvin plus 273 is equal to 3 plus 2 is 5. 7 and 3 is 10, so that's 305 Kelvin. Right, so now we can use our formula, our equation. We've got P1, V1 over T1 is equal to P2, V2 over T2. So we've got 100 multiplied by 10 divided by 288 is equal to 130 times our V2 over 305. Okay, so do you agree that to solve for this, I'm going to multiply by 305 and divide by 130. So therefore, I've got a thousand, because a hundred times ten is a thousand, multiplied by three hundred and five, all divided by two hundred and eighty-eight multiplied by one hundred and thirty, is equal to v two. And now we just need our calculator. So we go one, one, two, three, multiplied by three hundred and five equals divided by bracket two. 88 multiplied by 130 close bracket equals 8.15 8.15 so v2 equals 8 comma 15 and then you can look at the unit and it's decimeters cubed Right, grade 11s, let's call it a day for day. We will carry on looking at your gas laws and your ideal gas laws and the general gas equation and the ideal gas equation on Tuesday next week. Have a great day.